already started, have we? We're, we're, we're well into it. We've got we're, you guys. Oh, all <laughs> right. Oh, wait, there happened. you go. That's but, tricky. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but we'll start. Okay. Yeah. But it's nice to meet you. Likewise. Oh, all right. Damn. Yeah, nice Cheers, to man. You, yeah, cheers. <laughs> this is like the first real one. I have to get to do, man. You know what I mean? So oh, no, no, no time about the first one. I'm still spun out to have met you after oh. watching watching you on the... Whenever whenever in Australia, we rarely get a chance to see it. Yeah. When I've been watching time. it for a long time, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I just watched all your stuff this morning, <laughs> this afternoon, trying to just work out. Thanks, man. But the film stuff is incredible. Like, I'm going to just touch straight on that. Yeah, sure. I don't know much about filming. You know what I mean? Like, I obviously, I like things and I like the look of things, but when you, I've seen it, those few music videos where you cut their faces and there's all four different people mm. and stuff like, how'd you get into any, like, how did it all start from the start and then how's it, you know, progressing now? Yeah, I, it was just out of practicality. Like, the, I was studying, my, I was having my third attempt at university at, after times. the first two failed <laughs> and I uh, was studying law and paint, like started doing a bit of video editing uh, you do not want me to do oh. um, yeah doing a bit of video editing and kind of pay for the uni fees and it just mm-hmm. took off and so I quit uni again and just learned it all just through the all. internet because so, you do it all yourself right yeah, like, yeah. They'll, we'll bring something up so everyone can see but really it's incredible I'm only like you know noticing the red cameras and what everyone usually shoots for TV stuff and mm. the frame rates and stuff so to see someone that can actually do it like that and the skateboarding one, me. Oh, is that the Z Flex one? The Z-Flex yeah, one. yeah. Well, a lot of those, like the one you mentioned, this with the face with split, the, the Z Flex, yeah. that's all using like a motion control system. Yeah. So it's kind of like a camera robot. You get to tell the, the robot, I want to go from here to here over a certain amount of time, and then it can repeat it, can it perfectly it. as many times as you want at different speeds. So. Yeah, mate. That's, yeah. That's pretty... I always wanted to make a bike, right, that could do everything by itself. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure, imagine, yeah. if, imagine if it was like a little, like the trick bikes, but. Well, yeah. you know what you were saying before about the the scoring system. Yeah. For, yeah. For, so so did you did you see the the Intel stuff at the yeah. Winter X Games? So that's the stuff we used. Oh, the right. Start. So I went. I, I actually got to test the first four um four dirt, and they did oh, like right. the, the rating of the highest stuff. But it was it's really close, right? But it still was doing weird stuff. Like so, if the bars were moving, say if I did a truck like three sixty mm. bar spin and tail, it would be like three sixty the body's doing. So the bike's doing 360, then bar spins were undoing the 360, so it'd be uh, equal yeah, right. again. And then it would make it one spin of 360 right. with the tail. So, so they got sensors on the handlebars yeah, as well as got, the... I think it's got one in the middle of the bars, and then it's got one in the back of the seat, and then that is uh, what they see, and then they obviously just do it on the landing when we're coming in, what, yeah, they, right. what they think. Because a massive thing for me inside like my sport, we don't have a scoring system that actually... like is for the crowd mm. something that they can be like holy crap that makes total sense like a cash roll if i tell you what that is it's just like a half i'm going to do it with this football for you <laughs> imagine if you go up the lip and as you're about to go you do a 180 and then you do kind of a backflip right yep. so just before you're about to land you do another way and it's almost called like a 180 to flare and it's good cool. cash roll <laughs> mad dog made it up i mean no mad dog made it up sorry for that <laughs> daniel joe's made it up but mad dog made it like prime where you could actually see how like the mechanics were done yeah but then like a double backflip would be done and they don't know you know like we know what is harder you know and then the crowd doesn't get it so it's kind of like we and then conversely sometimes it seems like it's so the scoring so subjective something that you think everyone would be stoked on doesn't do as well and and, and i think that they're almost like going to the point where they don't really know what the fans really want to see anymore. Mm. And I know they want to see crashes. They go, go to nice oh, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But the normal people that actually like used to ride or, or care about it would be so much better, I think, if the sport was like more giving. You know what I mean? Like at the at the point of when we buy things for BMX bikes, it's so expensive, man. It's like we're riding motos. You know mm. what I mean? It's insane. And then people that ride motos, I'm sorry for their families because seriously, they're expensive. Yeah. But you used to ride skateboards. No, I mean, no, I, oh, only sort of. sort of, yeah. More, I was, I was very, very way back a rollerblader. Which, yeah, yeah, you know, I know that's oh. controversial to admit that. Come get it. I said the same thing. I was the same, man. The very start, rollerblades were it. I don't know what it was. They I were was cool the, when I was doing them. Were, yeah. I watched the uh, Toshi brothers. The Vert Riders, oh, yeah. doing all like yeah. the triple spins. And, oh, you couldn't keep up with that stuff. Like it's hard enough watching you yeah, guys yeah. when you do your oh, your flips. Doing... But these guys, you, you 
you, you still like 1280 like yeah, where 1280 you backwards entry something yeah. just like what yeah no that was like the same for me but yeah that was back when the the x games had just gotten going they were doing all those crazy events like sky surfing oh, and sky surfing. Like so I didn't even know bungee either, kayak so. and all this sort of bungee stuff kayak. yeah they put so, a dude in a kayak would get attached to a bungee rope and, and he'd jump off a bridge off. and he'd and have then, to do as many spins in the <laughs> kayak as he could that was a legit even, x game yeah. i don't even understand how you get that good at it you know what i mean like really it's all up to just if you're really light you would just flip man you know oh, it was they, they eventually weeded out the mm. weird ones and, and it looks like rollerblading got the flick not long after that but, yeah. Uh, yeah i think that came down to like a massive committee man too you know what I mean? yeah right. i think the same for me bmx is really that i feel like we do so much right we do that, like all these tricks and whatnot and we're we're like paid less than all the other athletes and whatnot and i feel like do you mean other athletes in the x games community in, no, or just, like just the in whole general general yeah. like motorbikes BMX, skateboarding. Like, skateboarding just took a massive leap when uh, Rob Dirk took over and made Street League. Made mm. it kind of legit. Oh, did that? Yeah, yeah right, kind of made it enough uh, that everyone knew the scores. That you, so if you did a tray flip, it was worth this much points. If you landed a little bit uh, heel over here, touched the ground, like deduction, you know? It was kind of mm. almost to the point where I want it. I, w- I would love a system that can watch something. Yeah. You know I mean, but where we're I, talking, I don't we're get talking it, man. 10 years, man, or something from here. Because, like, the, the sports stars that get adulation here in australia you know it's usually footy you know guys yeah, that are good at football. running and jump and smashing into, into someone, someone else, yeah. or hitting a ball and you guys need like you know you need the aerobic fitness of a middle distance runner with the air awareness of a gymnast and then you got to have the massive hairy balls of a front row yeah, you know like it, it's, exactly. it's it it doesn't get anywhere near the recognition that it deserves i, yeah. want, I want to make some documentaries on yeah. especially the we should do it the the australians guy because you like no, i have heaps to say you that. and logan and, yeah, yeah. and like in the skateboarding you got shane i always forget his last name shane come on neil Shane I mean, Neal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil, guys, yeah, yeah. They, they dominate the world, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and no one in Australia would know their names, no. but they're they're at that, the top of the field. Yeah, you're so onto it. I feel like yeah. it, same thing. It comes down to being it's such a big thing in such a bigger world. If that like it's yeah. so tiny, really. If you really looked at like what skateboarding has to fund it and whatnot, mm. it's just it's got like just Nike number one. You know what I mean? Like that's the biggest shoe company in the whole world. Mm. And for us, it's really hard to get those deals. And I think it comes down to us as well, like being. Real honest, I really think that we get free hotel rooms and shit and, and sponsors pay for shit and fucking people go crazy and break shit all the time and then they expect us to fucking make like, you know, ten million dollars, you know? How how do we how do we be like that's my whole piece to it now. It's like mm. I just now focus on myself, what I think the sport needs and, and I put myself in positions like this where I wanna tell people exactly how I feel about it. Mm. And I really feel like it's just got to do with the older guys and not letting the younger guys come in. And I, and I mean, it's not like they're just stopping them. It's kind of like there's no system to get them out mm. because the the younger ones are, you know, if if not better, way better. You know, what oh, I mean? they, like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's insane. They're like 15 years old now and I'm seeing them do double flips and you're just like, at 15, like I watched people do that, you know, and now I'm doing them all the time. It's not the same. It's still me, still mind-boggling. That's 15 years old. Oh, man. When the, was it the... Um... Dave Dave Mira tribute yeah, best trick at, at Austin. Yeah, yeah. Right ball, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Here she is. I was I was I was tweeting it out. I was putting it on my lame Instagram. It's got three followers. Oh, and, dude, you know, I'm gonna no. <laughs> shit out of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my phone. I was phone. trying to like let everyone know what was happening, and no one, none of my friends, sort of seemed to care. I felt like I was all alone. But there's you and and again Logan. Like yeah. it, it, it made all of the other guys on the field on the field on the park yeah, on the park look like they were asleep you know it yeah, seemed yeah. like everyone had checked out like they'd wasted their you know their tricks or whatever on the actual competition yeah, and, yeah. and you oh, come into I that best like trick and you guys just shut the whole place down it's, a, it's australians man i can't even tell it any more than that it really comes down to for me i wrecked my spot in making it a four time dirt champion then because i had to do so many interviews talking about mirror you know, and like it just kind yeah, of happened right. so it was like real mentally draining for myself and like then i just started like get like second guessing myself like i go to the lip i do like in dirt 720 into like three double whip and i land i'm like here we go front flip and then it's like no nah, back flip nah, spin and then it just something would happen you know what i mean and i just couldn't get it to that point so yeah here we go i'm following now <laughs> oh it says oh, link not allowed you have a link maybe that i can't have Hey, what? It's, it just came up with like a little thing saying links not allowed. Oh, that's a conspiracy. Yeah, conspiracy for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
What are they trying to? You know, Someone's trying to be, shut me down. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can't be friends. You're in conspiracy <laughs> stuff, aren't you? You're all into the. Uh, I I, I wear a tinfoil and... hat every now and then. Yeah, 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 I do. I do. Yeah, like politics. Yeah, and... down, you know? yeah, I've been watching it, and like my thing is, I don't really know a lot about politics, but I watch it when it is like you know when Trump was getting elected, or mm. like even right now before the London stuff that's just happened. And it's just, yeah, it's crazy. They just oh, man, they it's... just officially called hung parliament in yeah. in the UK, and no one was expecting it. Yeah, so. and it's, that is it. Man, the world's been in. Crazy. Yeah. Like, like I know America, okay, has that many people has that many guns and all that stuff, and I just I I get that. But we did. I looked at, uh, I think I was there in March, and I was looking at the statistics of New York City, how many people like have just been shot shot there, mm. and it was insane. It was more days than in the year that I've already died this year in there, and I'm just like, holy crap! And then you won't come home, and the news is all about just like people just being terrorists. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, being weak people. I think like fuck. Ah. <laughs> but you know what I mean it's one of those things that I watch it and I'm not really there to understand it all and I it, you know what's your like what's your position on all of that you know like the terror stuff that just happened in London that's massive right now yeah I mean it's tragic like the the, the events themselves yeah, and, and the cowardice of the people who would yeah, kind of a, perpetrate that sort of stuff mm. but the, the thing that scares me a bit is I mean if, if you step back a little bit and you think about why people would do this, why they'd kill themselves, why they put yeah, themselves yeah, why, in these positions. Them, yeah. If you look at the history of it, it's because of the foreign policy of America and in some ways Britain, and we've been a part of it. Like we've, we're a part of the coalitions that have gone into Iraq on false pretenses and invaded the place and just torn it to shreds. Mm, and definitely. then basically taken one faction of Islam, which is the, the Shia, who were a minority at the time, we put them in power. And so the Sunnis were kicked out and yeah. they're the guys that became ISIS. Yeah, yeah. So our actions, and in the end, if you look at why we went into Iraq, it was really, if you if you boil it down, there were no weapons of mass destruction. Mm. It was really just so they could get their hands on some oil contracts. So we've gone in for the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. messed the place up. And then out of that, up rises ISIS. And ISIS, now we're dealing yeah. with the, the consequences of that. So obviously right now, everyone's trying to figure out how to keep, keep our families safe. safe. That's yeah, the most yeah, important thing. Sure, but at some point, we've all got to step back and go, well, why did it happen in the mm. first place? And then, and then on the other side of it, is the overreaction that's potential from those kind of yeah, those, like, attacks because yeah, they, they can be used as a smokescreen. So in, you know, out of 9-11, we had in the, in the US, we had the Patriot Act, which definitely. violated civil liberties across mm-hmm. the board. We had the warrantless wiretapping from the NSA, snooping on people's phone Didn't calls. That, that'd be crazy. And, I would hate that. And, and all of that was, the justification was, oh, we need to keep people safe from terrorism. But, but if without the public being aware and yeah, active in, in it, a lot of dodgy shit can yeah, be done in the name guys, of yeah. safety, you know? Definitely. And here in Australia, Right now, the government, no, can, if they want to, they can see every website you've ever visited. Mm. All that information is being retained by the telecommunications company. Okay. And, that, uh, and that's being done in the guise of we need to keep everybody we need safe. To keep them safe. Yeah. All right. So then what do you think? Like, I've had this question forever. My iPhone. Okay? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I go onto it and I, and I will search someone on Instagram, say, and then the next day I'll be talking to someone and I almost feel like the same thing I'm talking about will kind of pop up. It's like in a circle. You know what I mean? Do you think that... They, it like is on all the time. Like it does do, you know, the voice recording. Like well, you know, like for for that same kind of reason, as in one thing that has been proven with with phones is yeah. here's one example. Anyway, there was a, a company that re- recently got revealed that were had developed technology. Um, I want to say it was Silverlight, but I think that's a Microsoft thing. It's, it's something that sounds like Silverlight. Okay. Anyway, it was it, it was a way it. that they could they could build into a whole heap of phone apps reception technology or, or technology that could listen yeah. out for certain signals that then they would plant in say advertising on television or programs yeah, on television yeah, yeah. so you're sitting there playing, so subconsciously, a, playing just candy crush or something on your phone and it's a little do you know you, you've given that app um permission to use the microphone on your phone yeah, right yeah. it's the it's the tv's on in the background and you're watching whatever it's listening out for these hidden frequencies inside the audio from that tv that show TV or show. that advertising and it's logging the data and it's sending that back to the company to say, hey, while such and such is doing this doing on his this, phone, this. he's watching that and he reacted in such and such a way. Right. And then who oh. knows if then you, you double that up by the fact you've got an Apple you Watch Apple on your wrist yeah, and yeah. it can say, oh, his heart rate spiked when he saw, when the, he saw that. that thing. Exactly. And, and all that data gets captured. No, so. Makes sense, <laughs> I never thought of it in that kind of like yeah. you know, the way of it all working together. I'll, I'll go deep down the rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, shit. I mean, so I, just, I, just I, tell I, me when it gets no, boring. No, no, no. <laughs> I love all that stuff because that's my piece now. I'm kind of like always... You know, I got told, this is how I feel in my life. I was told so many things from so many people that were close, whatever, to maybe like 23 or 24. And then 
somehow I just started guessing, uh, like not guessing, I mean, I started asking yeah. questions about everything someone was saying to me because I started like almost telling lies because I'll listen to someone and then I put on what they just told me onto someone else. They'd be like, nah, that's not it. This is it. And then down the line, you do the same mm. thing again. And I was just sick of that kind of thing. So now I research a lot of stuff. And it's good, like, That's the way you got to be. Yeah, yeah, I try and understand a lot. I have a friend named Tim White. He does this type of thing as well, man. But he's into. he would love to talk to you because he's <laughs> so much more into it. And like we talk about it. Mm. But the level that he knows of it, because all he does is just stay around listen to podcasts all day at work you know for 12 hours like just yeah cool yeah so he probably listens to you i could literally <laughs> talk to him and ring him up and be like, hey. but uh no it's really cool to meet someone that actually is on that level too that because i feel like knowing more just it's almost almost better you know in the way that if i know more about my food i'd put better things yeah. in my body if yeah. i knew more about like how my body language is towards other people when i'm walking around like uh, you change that because then it stops you getting in fights for no reason. You know what I mean? All that stuff. Yeah, it just cool. comes down the whole way because I I'm, I love the secret. You know what I mean? Like the law of attraction. That's my. I don't know how. I've always maybe done it where mm. you want to be a BMX rider, you don't stop, and you become a BMX rider. But then that comes down to just hard work, as Conor McGregor says it. Mm. Anyone is equal at the start, and then the more work we put in, the better. You know, we become yeah, more yeah, I believe it. So, yeah, it comes down. To that. <laughs> no, it's really good to meet someone just like that. Yeah, well, I, th- I think that's. The more we can convince ordinary people to be active in public life, like be, mm. you don't have to be running for office or anything, no, but they, sure. they should be aware of the kind of policies that could affect their lives because yeah. the, the, I think the biggest risk at the moment is, is corporate influence over politics because. So what does that mean? So, well, so, so the influence of massive corporations massive, yeah. over politics because okay. they're allowed to give money yeah, to they, politicians. I actually and, watched that last night. It was to do with them getting. Uh, money given them from offshore accounts or something, right? Yeah, well, they can come from so many so sources many at the places, moment. Like, yeah. there's a big controversy at the moment in Australia over Chinese donations yeah, in particular. That, yeah, but there's so many right. different ways that it can in, come in. interfere with politics. But when, they, I, when I watched the news, he was like, you can, uh, like, take money if it's for, like, say, a non for profit thing or whatever, but the same non for profit thing can't be. It's almost like for me, when I, I can't even know, I don't even know how to explain it to you, but mm. I watched it. was kind of like they were saying this, the same way, two different ways of getting the same money into our country. Oh, I know what you mean. It's yeah. almost like, they were, like you get given it or you get like a. Well, what, what they're doing is the, the, so the Chinese investors, like especially Chinese property investors, yeah, for course. instance, have been given huge amounts of money to the li- Labour the and the Liberal Party. So there's calls for that to be shut down. And obviously these guys don't want us to be shut down because it funds their campaigns, yeah, the campaign, and, which sure. is terrible that they, they, they should yeah, want they that. pay forever after they're finished. And ex- don't get me started on that. Mm. And mm. so the way they're trying to stop, they're trying to push back on that is they're saying, oh, well, if we do that, then the Chinese investors are just going to give the money to GetUp because GetUp like destroyed the liberal campaign in the last okay. election. GetUp, I think they received 90... I'm not, I'm not necessarily yeah, yeah, a big yeah. fan of GetUps, but they, they, they receive something like 90% of their funds just from ordinary Australians that just oh, donate shit. money. And I think the final... GetUp is like, a, is it like a, to build businesses? No, they're, 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 they're a political action okay. kind of group. So okay. they, they're, they're the ones that raise awareness and things like the Great Barrier yeah, Reef or tax yeah. avoidance. And they, they were really active against guys like Peter Dutton in the last election. Yeah, yeah. But they, I think the last 10% of their funding sometimes comes from overseas, but it's from other non-profit organizations but the liberals are trying to say so, oh they what if they get given money from these investors which will never happen yeah they're yeah, just, yeah. They're just oh. using it as an excuse to not do what they should be doing for me so, do you think do you, all right so this is going on even deeper than into yeah. it because this is like for me i lived in tahatchapi for like four years and i drove past a house that had a luminati sign at the top of the house and so i looked it all up and then i started like the conspiracies but like, there's someone that runs everyone <laughs> above like Chase Bank and all that stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah. your thing? Like for me, I watched the Chase thing on Netflix. I watched like the the money how like how we borrow money and mm. no matter what, as soon as we borrow, we're interest like on top of it like so much and all these different bits. We're already in debt so much because we can't get out of it ever because mm. whoever you know is a Chase or whoever. You know, what's your thing on? Yeah, I mean, there's there's pretty conclusive evidence that families like the Rothschild family, yeah, Rothschild, that's yeah what I was the, like Chase Bank, Rothschild. Yeah, Rothschild. yeah, I mean, there's there's a global money system that is run by a really small number of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the specifics of the really kind of conspiratorial ends of it, but so you're not into, you oh, I, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I more just haven't kind of gotten around yeah, to, to yeah, following yeah. it all up, but I know for sure that there's, I mean, there's no doubt that there's this tiny 
fraction of one percent that are controlling just huge amounts of the world's yeah, wealth yeah, and the they're world. they've got a vested interest to keep it that way and because of things like donate political donations yeah, yeah, yeah. we're supposed to be all in a democracy but it's not a democracy if the guys in power are getting funded by funded these by, tiny yeah. little percentages of, of society how about, so. how about then when trump got in then you know what i mean like is that kind of like their like do you think they actually like because my question is more like do you think they actually make the decisions that we're seeing you know like the, the people behind that has all the money they don't obviously need to have a face when you have Trump or you have whoever is the yeah. man on top. Well, to I, it, you know? yeah, the the, tr- the Trump thing, it, it was an interesting one. So there's, there's two there's a, there's br- two brothers in the states called the Koch brothers who yeah. own huge amounts of ga- oil and gas refineries and okay. and you if, if you look at a chart of the products that they're in control of, it's you like almost everything in American is, society. Right? So, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they they they're known as being extremely active in funding Republican political okay, campaigns okay, yeah. and funding sort of smear campaigns against other candidates they in the last election they they always hold these wanky little conferences where all of the people who want to, who are running in that election turn up and suck up to them so it's basically yeah. a couple of days of conference Conferences, sessions and they yeah, all yeah. just suck up to these two coke brothers um coke is k-o-c-h in case anyone's yeah. wondering um k-o-c-h you got it <laughs> yeah. just bring it up now. <laughs> they um and uh in the la- in that last election campaign, the only guy who didn't go to that conference it's been blocked, man. To- <laughs> it's a conspiracy. It's fucking saying no. There'll be there'll be a SWAT team out in the front yeah, right. a second. Um, yeah, the only yeah. Go- the only candidate who didn't go to suck up to them was Donald Trump because he had enough of his own money to run his own campaign. Yeah, yeah. But having said that, he was the guy that was saying, "Oh, I'm going to drain the swamp and I'm going to clean up politics." Everything he's done since he got in is exactly the opposite. Yeah, so, yeah. so he's installed billionaires and millionaires into the key roles. Mm-hmm. There's there's about three people from Goldman Sachs who don't get me started on them. They're, yeah, they're yeah. one of the most evil banks in the world. Okay, they're, they're in positions of power so in his administration. Real, but they're massive though, right? Oh, so they're, they don't, they, they were not, I've never heard, I Gold, Goldman them. Sachs were were probably the most responsible for the global financial crisis. Okay, they were the guys who were writing these. They came up with these ridiculous financial structures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so they what they did was take. Imagine taking all of these mortgages that are definitely going to fail. You know they're yeah, going to yeah, fail. Definitely. You package them into this little bundle with a couple of good mortgages, yeah, like and then you ones, then you go to the the ratings agencies who are corrupt because they all get paid by Goldman anyway, and say, right. "Hey, can you give this a triple A rating?" And got this and, is that movie? Right? Yeah, the Inside yeah, Job. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're inside a job. Yeah, oh, there's Inside Job, and then there's Big Short, which the is Big the good. Short is the one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, and I've watched that probably a hundred times. It's a good I, one. I really like how they just work it out from it just being. Time has to do it. It has, you know, time has that certain bit of like you know, ten years up, yeah, to, to yeah. The cycle of this and that. But so, it, but in this case, that like they yeah. they were allowed to get away with it. They they created these junk bonds they sold them to their customers and then they on the other side of the equation bought insurance policies betting, betting that their customers yeah, stuff would fail definitely. so they were like the casino and the puncher at the same time mm. they were like they'd win no matter what happened yeah, yeah. they got a, they don't not only got away with it they got given billions of dollars of taxpayer money that they then paid themselves bonuses in and then turned around and started writing that coming up with those structures again that had been banned yeah. and interestingly so today you know we've had james comey's testimony the former fbi director yep, yep, testifying yep. in front of the senate committee we've had this britain thing and in all of that mess no one really has paid attention to the fact that the republicans have just repealed the dodd frank act which was the only legislation that was trying to fix what went wrong in the oh, global financial oh, crisis oh, so while all this yeah, craziness yeah, is so going on like they're off they're off turning over that law so that financial huge financial institutions can start like, treating yeah, like the economy true. as a casino again mm. so that's oh, that and, and if people don't pay attention that's the shit yeah, that happens no, definitely. Yeah. And, and i think too people that actually don't pay attention like don't even like man they're too simple like to be honest with you i've met a lot of people well life. they're I mean, busy they watching the kardashians yeah yeah and i'll be honest with you just on the kardashian thing i really don't care how it got to where it is where how she started to this point but she, you could give, say, 100 people a million dollars, but there's only going to be a few, like, in that 100 people that can turn 1 million into whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I never so thought of it like that. But this is how I see it. <laughs> she can be good at whatever she is 10 years from now. There's going to be another one that, you know, yeah. you might have a daughter or a son, you know, there's going to be another one of these in 10 years. And that's yeah, what I was yeah. talking about. It's kind of like, uh, my missus watches it, and I, I find it full of shit, because they're just making, that's almost fakely made TV in my eyes. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. even though my mistress thinks it's like fucking meant to happen, and I'm like, yeah, okay, they would really say yeah. that. Like, <laughs> that's like t- take 10 or something, you know? So, 
No, but on that whole bit, that motivates me in that sense, like when I watch things like that, only because you can have so much haters, so many like mm. people that, and I think the system's built like this, like in school I was built to just crush myself and everyone around me if anyone trying to do something good. It wasn't like pat them on the back, it was more yeah, like, no, hate about that dude. Tall then, poppy syndrome. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 tall poppy syndrome. And yeah. then now it's kind of like when I watch those sort of things, you can be two ways, a hater, or you can be like almost like, it's almost like a jealousy kind of thing that I get from it. It's almost like, I, I almost could be like that if I put in as much time as she did, you know what I mean? And I don't, I've watched probably three or six, you know what I mean? I haven't watched a million of them. No, I'm, pr- like, I'm impressed, man. I'm going to yeah. like, I, I would have been in the I hater camp, so I'll take, I'll take that on yeah, board. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That board, that's, <laughs> that's how I look at certain things now from this whole like, oh, same thing, like people don't even understand how good, like if you lay on the grass, how good the grass smells, it's crazy. And like, people don't take life like that because it's the same thing they're sitting in front of the couch watching something that doesn't have any meaning to what yeah. we want oh, pretty much if the whole world got smarter we would fix fucking everything so easily but it's like you only have so many smart people that actually want to learn and get knowledge about these certain things we're talking about you know yeah uh, well, well the I system's mean, set up for us to be too busy to be able to do that like there are, we all work you know five out of seven days mm-hmm. and the way the economy structured most people are living you know, the, the, the saying is job, your job, J-O-B, stands for just over broke, you know? It, yeah, yeah. Can it, you open the door? Just because it's really hot. Cook, cooking in here. <laughs> what about? What about you turn the aircon on? Yeah, when you hit the aircon, that'd be dope. Wait, aircon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, keep going. <laughs> well, I was just saying, like, <coughs> no, most, I think from most people's lives you know I mean? are structured to just be scraping by so you've never got wiggle room to take some time off or to feel like you're you're not stressed because most people leverage themselves up right to the hilt so your mortgage payments and your car payments are just underneath what you're earning so you've never got the time to kind of sit back and go hang on why why is my life structured like this how do you think that happened though like do you think it's like because for me this structure was built from school man as soon as i was in school and i did something wrong it wasn't that they took me and was like, this, you learn this yeah. certain way, like kinesthetic or visual or auditory. Exactly. They just yeah. went, you have ADD. And we got, then I got tested. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got undiagnosed. Well, they, they said that ADD. And I went and got tested, nothing. And yeah. I, all I was was, you just learned a different way. I love the idea of touching things. Like yeah. the, it, when they're explaining things, if I have it in my hand, I can, I can fully work out how it happened before they say it. If yeah. I'm just trying to listen, I can't even picture it. I'm like, uh. so then I was doing all those bad things in school like I even put a vice with a drill in it and then I uh, tied the like so the lever was fully up and I taped it and then I put it in there and went straight through the roof right? <laughs> that was it finished year 11 they kicked me out but like in that bit I noticed what I just lost like seriously this is like something I've never kind of said ever like ever I mean school to me was the time where I had free almost free time like mm. the, the six seven years as soon as you leave school you don't understand what happens to you like yeah. you don't, yeah, it's like my brother still lives at home you know i would still live at home if i could you know because I mean? mum does everything but it's like when you hit this certain age you get out and you really get into a bubble where you are with everyone else and you, you think the same way as everyone else or you you create your own bubble and you don't care what people think mm. and that's where i feel like school did that to me where i got a teacher telling me every day like you never do anything because I'm bad but I think he's only saying it because I'm being bad now mm. I understand it but back then I thought he was just saying it because he wanted me to be nothing or whatever mm. and then when you finish you're like holy crap like thanks so much to the hard dude that made me stand up because there's a lot of kids that get told they're nothing and they believe it and they just become zeros because they want to work for Maccas or something because that's that's what we're being told forever well, Yeah, well, I feel like some schools could fucking literally lift kids up yeah to this spot where they are more creative than say ourselves at that same age. Yeah, you know my, I mean? my, my school, all they talked about was university. All, yeah. all of it was geared towards getting a good OP and, and going to university. Yeah. And like I was generally towards the top end of it, all of my classes. Mm-hmm. So I was the guy that, you know, was going to go and go yeah, down that yeah, path. Yeah, and man, I, sure. like I said, I tried three times to, to well, university. What happened? Well, like, so the first time, I, like you quit, right? Well, like, yeah, the, the, like, you, the first time I went to do journalism and, and I, cause I, I was good at writing, so people said you should be a journalist. So you listen to other people. Bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and turns out being a being a journalist yeah. is so little about writing and so much about like being a, a hustler, a hustler, and yeah, getting right, out there sure. and getting the story. I so I did that for six months and kind of realized it wasn't going to work out and went and installed pallet racking around Australia for yeah. for a few years. Okay. And then oh, so I guess the money, in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, hang on. Before that, I did, I tried two weeks of marketing and screen production okay, in Griffith. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a few years later. 
watched Patch Adams and decided I wanted to become a doctor and then found out you needed an undergraduate degree first. Yep, so I thought yep. I'll go do law just because I'm an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn it, that's what it's driven though. Like, that's what I, like at the end of the day. You, yeah, you well, not driven passion. enough to finish it. No, any no, of no, them, no, but, but, yeah. not, but this is what I'm saying. Like the drive is to, to be happy every single day. But that, that you went six months in this one and you realized like that's what I... People that work jobs that they fucking hate, I don't yeah. understand why they just don't think of. Well, they, they get locked into it, you know, yeah, you, you, especially anyone that has a has a kid early yeah, or something that they got to look well. after their family, and mm-hmm. then you realise that you got to start putting some money in your super fund, and yeah. there's all there's all these structures that are, are built to lock us into it, and then when you think when you the, the thing that freaks me out is when you hear economists and politicians talk about monetary policy and economic policy mm-hmm. it's all based around this this fine juggling act to, uh, so i'll give you one example i've i've only just heard that economists and politicians want to keep the unemployment rate around five percent they they wouldn't like it if it went below five percent because if it goes too much below that inflation goes up yeah, yeah. so we're in this we're in this system Almost where like we have to have five percent of the population without a job otherwise it doesn't work, doesn't work and no one's asking the question well that's yeah. a shit well, system why, why, why can we yeah. can we change that do you know what is that is there like is well it, it's is it, it money it's because it, well I, i'm actually not going to do a really crap job of explaining this but if inflation goes too high there's a whole heap of factors that that's that, that kind of throws out and the idea is if the, if we don't have that five percent unemployed there's too many people with too much money to spend uh no i need to catch up you gotta catch up wait can we get another one please Mm. i love that stuff though that's my whole piece i'll give you a toys if you want all right then queue it up yeah i'll queue you up but uh like after knowing certain things it's hard to like I, i don't know if you get this but it's hard for me to listen to other people now that talk shit about the things that I actually know. Like, you would get this because you're way into it. So, like, when people come up to you and be like, hey, man, this is wrong. Like, say on your your comments, on your mm. videos or some shit, and someone tries to explain that what you said is, like, the power, mm. okay? Yeah, yeah. Our power people are ripping us off. I pay that much in power. <laughs> it's fucking silly, right? And then you explain it on this thing where you got the coal, you know, it goes to the lines, and then yeah. you explain, like, the lines have 51% and stuff. So, like... It's really not knowledge- like knowledgeable. I was going to say knowledgeable, but knowledgeable <laughs> stuff. And, and I think the way that you're doing it too is like, I like that. You know what I mean? And I think the viewers will like that because if they're like me, man, they're, they're into things that actually like make them actually feel like they're doing something for other people. Like so, for me, that's watching your stuff just then was just me kind of knowing a little bit more about what I should actually really know, like ten years ago. Because I've been living in a house paying electricity for mm-hmm. ages, and I don't know who I actually pay because. You got gas, and that does this bit, and then you got the actual electricity, and then when you move houses, they try to stiff you with fees, man, like sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah, change this over. It's yeah, like, yeah. What are you talking about? The power's <laughs> right there. I know. I can just go to the next door and plug it straight in, and it works. You know. So like, it, that was a good video. Yeah. Know? Well, well, to, to speak that? Yeah. to speak to your point about about dealing with people that you know disagree with you, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that's another massive i mean this is all going to get a little bit deep yeah, yeah, i'll yeah. probably well, go down the rabbit hole but i like the whole bit of i think the more people hate me is better so the more you talk about this this is how i yeah well well i think what i've been sort of starting to realize lately is is so much of what gets in the way of us as humans moving forward is what you're talking is is that whole troll mm. debating mm. fighting each other you know how do we how do we debate situation and i think the problem is that I don't know where it came from culturally. This one. Yeah, because do it. When you finish, I go, yeah. <laughs> so culturally. Cu- culturally, somehow we've all ended up with this attitude where when we do find our own truth, mm. when we try to share that with other people, I'm not saying you do this, no, but, no, but yeah, a lot of people no, do no, this, lot, yeah. that when they try to share it with someone else, they do it in a really antagonistic way or mm. they do it in a way that kind of, it, it there's this subliminal ego that comes out of it like if yeah, i said to you yeah. oh did you know that you know electricity yeah, comes so, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, something yeah, in definitely. you twigs that i'm trying to i think i'm hot shit yeah, Some, yeah, something yeah, goes yeah, oh yeah like talking down yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's the condescension or the patronizing definitely, comes definitely. through and it somehow it seems to be like a human default there's yeah. people that obviously don't do it but no, i no, find no, that the vast majority of people do, do it. yeah and it's sure. the same attitude that you get from internet trolls that are on comment threads and whatever yeah, there's this they, they're heroes, looking like, to elevate themselves oh, yeah. above somebody else to prove they're smarter and someone else is dumb i think that's like the most destructive force in society at the moment okay and that's explain that's it, a, explain it to me because like for me if i'm doing something really good on the bike and some like man okay 
this is how much I hurt my feelings. So I was one year into being pro and a guy told me I had fat thighs because I used to wear these blue jeans, <laughs> man. That was like, they were like fucking cowboy jeans, but whatever. And it was just a comment. Fucking had no name. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I got so offended with that, right? Because yeah. I was in this bubble where I almost get offended by the same things other people do. Mm. See, when I am where I am now, I don't think of them even being jealous. I think of it as in like, I have no idea what they go through mm. anymore. Like I don't, I don't sit here and think that I know exactly. You could tell me all your life stories, but I still don't know exactly what you've been through. And the yeah. same things that I've lost are, and the same things you lost are not, in my eyes, the same uh, feeling. Because people try and say that you lose someone, like I lost my brother, they tell me, like they try and say that you know someone else has lost theirs and it's the same. And I try and do it to other people as well, like mm. a normal, uh, like being kind, I guess. Mm. But at the end of the day, like, only you can feel those certain things, you know what I mean? And like when that happened, I put myself in this box where I started doing everything by myself and being like more me. And I think that motivated me where the other times where, you know, you, my videos get caned sometimes and I'm just like, it's so funny because I, I must be doing something so right somewhere. Yeah. That these yeah. people are fucking trying to surround their whole day around me. Yeah. And they do the same thing, you know what I mean? Like if they're watching you, if they're watching you podcast, like I will be for now on, it's kind of like, I'm interested in what that is. And then the people that are even talking shit, mm. I really find it so funny that they're listening to it to make comments on it at the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. this was fucking shit. I'm like, man, <laughs> how does that even make sense? Why would you even do you just fucking delete it? Why does, why does humans do that? Why do we... We don't want to follow this person on Instagram because we hate their photos, but we'll follow it. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's maybe mean to get her off or something. Like, yeah, it's, I, it's human I, I, I reckon you've still got to be... You know, you've still got to be firm in what you believe mm -hmm. and confident find a way to be confident mm. i'm more talking about where it, you know let's use a crazy example of trying to find peace in the middle east you know yeah, like yeah. if you if you put netanyahu and mahmoud i think is it still mahmoud Abbas? i can't remember the palestinian leader now can't anyway see, whoever you, it is you know all those. I don't it, know. If, if you put the two of them in a room together to try to negotiate if either one of them has that thing I just talked about yeah, yeah, where yeah. they can tell they can that tell there's that bit of ego in there mm -hmm. or they want to save face, they don't want to be shown to be wrong. Yeah. If either one of them has that, they're, they're not going to find common ground. You know, there, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's, I think the, the nirvana for humanity would be to find this place where we're confident in what we believe, mm -hmm. but we're still open to, be, to find out new things or yeah, to be yeah, shown to be wrong. Definitely. And we don't need to project onto someone else that I'm better than you, or I know better yeah, than yeah, you, yeah. or I, I know a better way. I think it's the way that it's, it's kind of it's, a, like, it's the way that people talk, man. You know, yeah, it's like to, yeah. direct or something. I know what you're saying because in school that was what I'm talking about. Mm. And now I hang out with kids all the time. I feel like I'm like goody goody. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I don't even talk normal anymore. I talk more towards kids because mm. like they're the ones that obviously light you up. You know what I mean? When yeah, yeah. Is. But yeah, the same, man. Yeah, the whole the whole human thing, man. I just feel like sometimes, and I, uh, Steve Jobs even says it, man. He's like, humans sometimes are dumb. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. I mean, you have a dumb person in the right position, and sometimes you do in like, not my sport or someone else's sport, but at the end of the day, there's always these wrong people. Like, this is what I want to touch on next. It's kind of like, uh, do, you, do you know of someone, right? That if you had, it's not, not even someone, the name. It's kind of like, uh, for me, if I had the same as someone else, I think I could affect more people's lives in a really positive way. Mm. And uh, like our kids are trying from the bottom, like so they're zeros right now, they're trying to be a BMX pro and whatnot, and we're trying to like give them optimistic kind of outputs to whatnot. What would you say would be like kind of the first thing like you would do if we were trying to get into like the physics type of stuff, like, you know, like the uh, politicians, you know, what's, what's a good way for that we can actually learn? Because I want to start actually trying to fucking understand why we get shut down all the time. And if any viewers want to do that, I don't want them to just be like, where's this link and ah, ah. But really Yeah, I, I, mean, I think the first step is become informed. Mm -hmm. And the, the hardest part about that, particularly here in Australia, yeah. is so much of our media is controlled by one dude, which is Rupert Murdoch. You know, like he, here in, in Brisbane, oh, God, really? there's only one newspaper, the Courier Mail, and yeah, it's Korea dog Mail. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally my dog shit on it. That's, okay, what, I, that's nice. what I use it for. Okay. And then the, the, the only national newspaper is the Australian, that's owned by Rupert yep, Murdoch yep, as well. Definitely. So the trick is finding, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't things in those newspapers that aren't right for some people, yeah, but, but like you just don't, you, you don't want one 
I don't think you want to go through life in a, like you, you're talking yeah, about a bubble. Like a, bubble. You don't want to go through an echo chamber where all your friends think the same thing, Definitely and every time you say something, everyone's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's right." Yeah, yeah. You want to you want to have people challenge what you think and Definitely. what you say. You gotta, you're always got to have like because that, that like I said goes all the way back to the beginning when you're telling lies from listening to someone else. Yeah. And then it comes down to your circle of people, and yeah. like that's the next bit I want to touch on. It's a circle of your friends are the reason I really think. Yeah. The reason you make certain things happen or don't happen. You know what I mean? If you're hanging out with. 10 millionaires you should be the 11th one if you're not something's happening you know what I mean so for me now I hang out with people like yourself trying to get into all the dynamic spaces of kind of life you know what I mean like yeah. I said before it's, I really like I love trees weird enough like I just watched a movie and it was uh, I don't know what it was it was um the guy that um, was perfectly fine and then he ends up being in a wheelchair because he has a ah uh, Stephen Hawking oh, yeah, that movie yeah. about him and it's that movie like it was just about taking time you know, because time always moves. Mm. It's like, I ride a bike for a living. I don't always get to go to places for the reason of seeing things. Mm. I get to be fucking just crazy, as they say. Like, go to X Games and just <laughs> send it and whatnot. But, like, for me now, I really take notice of all the things. You know, I'm like, I'm 26. Uh, if I looked at my 20 self, like, 21-year-old self now and, and I wanted to be this certain person, I think I've changed how, I, like, I look at life. You know what I mean? And I think that comes down all the way down if you're having shitty times. Mm. It's because you're making the energy, sh- like for me, it's shitty energy going out and wonder what you're going to get back. Yeah, I believe you know that. I mean? so. and, and I reckon just being curious all the time. Yeah, like yeah, always oh, yeah. wanting to find out more about whatever it is that's around you and, and being finding that balance of being open-minded but strong in your yeah, yeah. belief you system. Gotta, you know yeah, what I mean? Because you can't, if, if you're totally sure. open, you'll just get swayed in no, the no, direction of whatever. I think that's where you're in that bubble. And you're yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And you're like, yep, yep, yep. I'll do the same. That's what I, man, dream for me, right? I'm going to go into dreams because I want to see what your <laughs> dream is for you, what you have planned. Because yeah. in, the, in the future, you're not going to have five, like thousand subs. You're going to have like five million. So you're going to have to have <laughs> Thanks, content man. coming out. Blah, blah. <laughs> and I know because we need like, help. I know, you know, kind of Fox and stuff is, you know, I know who that is and we know like Dakota Shields and I know people that have followers. Mm. It's like not, it's not hard work because you love what you do. Mm. And I think that's like what I'm trying to get at. It's just, it's like I can see passion. You know what I mean? And when someone finds that, like, Hopefully someone is listening to us and being like, holy shit, I really like this. It's like going for it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, you had to go to university the first time. You had to come out and go, fuck, that wasn't for me. This is it. No, this one. And now you make videos that informs people that can't watch the news. Like, that's, it's almost like the project. You know how the project's so different yeah, than the yeah. news, but it's the same. Mm. You're doing your own way on that and it's making it more interesting for people like myself and obviously younger people that want to not really just dive straight into something like that, but really just, you know, Really you, you were about to say what your dream was. I was oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Mate, I go back to it. So I've been drinking uh, one beer, you know what I mean? I don't drink that much at all and you just go into the spin. But really, my dream is to make a school that has the ability to like a kid wants to go, like so it would be all the way through from one to year 12 and I would have the school rated as like a school just for athlete kids. And okay. I mean, anyone that wants to be an athlete, I mean, mm. in the sense of an athlete is so thrown around like crazy but I think an athlete is you being at your own physical self like your physical mass like if you want to be massive then you, we help you get massive whatever but really just you being okay with you mm. that's that's my thing see if people are always looking for how to fix themselves to some greater thing like and that makes them feel good and I, and I say nah it's like you do, you work out the feeling comes you know like the the feeling from inside like yeah I did something and that, if you keep it doing Hey mate, if you keep it going, it keeps going, you know mm. what I mean? So, like, for me, the school would be built on professional athletes risking their time instead of being, like, because we don't have a contest kind of season where it's, like, monthly, monthly. It's kind of, like, all over the shop. But if we ever got that to six months on, the six months off would be really a school built on kids coming at one. I talk to them from one to, say, year 12, and I all I do four hours a day is ride with these kids, you know what I mean? And mm. I literally show them why... Like, the reason I made it is not the reason why everyone else is going to make it, but, like, the only thing I did is I just didn't stop. Mm. You know what I mean? Same as you didn't stop. You can't... It, the more walls I hit, the stronger I got from going through them. You know what I mean? That's that's just true life. Mm. And then that's the dream for me is to own a school, you know, say 10 years from now, and it has basketball, NA, NFL, NHL, skateboarding, BMX, scooter, and rollerblading. <laughs> and I literally just get... Not even, not even have to be the best pros. Like even people that want to learn how to be like that. Because nowadays, I'm like the highest paid athlete 
because I do all the interviews and I do the social media and I do, but no, there's no criteria how to get to that. You yeah. know? So my goal is in this school is to build kind of like a whole brand new BMX look yeah. where it's not crap when you go to a skate park and it's full with graffiti. It's just those wrong kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, I build them a wall behind it, seriously, that is free graffiti <laughs> and I guarantee there'll be none on the skate park because I know the kids that they're only doing that because we're filming on this part of the skate park with lights and stuff and they come to this spot right here because they want to watch and guess what, they can't do anything, they're 10, 15 years old and they have pens with them and they just start, <laughs> it's like at the end of the day, they just get, uh, like if they had what they needed, it would be different, you know what I mean? And that's my whole goal. Like, that's great, man. You know, it's huge, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Massive. Ah, you'll get there. Yeah, no, if, definitely. I, my the kind of drive you got going on, it won't take long, man. Yeah, I love it. I, I, the, the whole bit to me yeah. is uh, I love people that love what they do, right? And, and anyone that doesn't, I want to help them get to the spot where they love what they do, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've only met, like, a good, like good 10 people that I've ever looked at and gone, holy crap, I would, like, I want to hang out with this, like, just certain person instantly, and mm. you're one of them, and it's just because of that feeling where... You're almost learning all the time. And I feel like that in school, you hated that. But now, no. I, I'm all about that. I go to ride, I have to learn something new. If yeah. I don't, fuck it, I'm going insane <laughs> mentally because my mental state should be that I've got to get scared almost every day for the ability for like me to bring out the best in myself. You know? yeah, and awesome, I just it built it from way yeah. back in the day. But yeah. All right, quick question then. How many bones are broken? None. None. All right, touch wood. <laughs> All right, I'm 27 deep, man. How, so I took you. 27. 27. I took oh, some of yours. Dude. You know what I mean? How, so, can I ask you some yeah, questions? Yeah, now? yeah. Because yeah. no, I'm like, I am, a, I am a pretty mad fan man. of the, of, of you guys. Oh, killing the, me, the, the X guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Logan <laughs> man, Logan's sick, dude. Um, so like, what's the what's your next like holy grail for tricks? Is there is there is it you know you know they had the the uh-huh. dumb example the 900 in skateboarding yeah, yeah, yeah. is there like a is there like a massive holy grail for BMXing no, at the moment there's, or is no, just... there's no real trick that someone goes like I th- see skateboarding was at a point where I think the 900 came in after say all the tricks were ever done mm. and it's like 900 was there we we steal from everything so like we do some tricks that are on motorbikes we steal some tricks that are on skateboards and then we do our own kind of tricks that but it really comes down to now making up new ones that See, physics doesn't even let you do a cash roll. So, like, the trick I was explaining to you. I want to see that. Can, can you bring yeah, that Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, if I got it, I'll show you. It's, it's, I have it on my Instagram, but really, at the end of the day, because your body's going forward and trying to go up a ramp, and I'm in my head, just as I get to the top, I'm pulling my brakes on, so momentum's going to start going forward, and I, and I turn left on the lip. So, as I'm going, the momentum of the bike, the, just the front wheel spinning, takes me over it's it's mm. weird. like when you watch the trick you'll understand what i'm saying and the holy grail now i think is the sports coming to a piece where you've got to be consistent in everything like yeah you got to be able to do all your tricks at 100 percent, and you need to be landing smooth and, and i think now that is where it's coming to where the best trick like the dave mirror one is, is built on a kid, and this is what I want to have one because I love that the idea. Because I watch Russians, man, and they probably can't jump boxes good, but they go do triple backies, and it's like. So right now, no, there is no holy grail, but yeah, I've been right. working on something for ages. It's called a Jackie Tuck under. <laughs> Weirdest name, uh, but uh, I like, love as, this stuff. as as uh, I'm gonna get my phone for this just so it like makes more sense. So this is the. Block. Oh wait, wait, is it? Can you play it again? <clears throat> Yeah, so this is a cash roll. So 180, look at it, boom. And then he's like, he just started to look right now. And that's all momentum. Like, that's just on the lip. So when you take off, you know if you got it or not. And that's how usually the tricks are for us. Oh, man. So it kind of looks... Uh, it's weird. If you watch it again... It, can it, you play it in... Does it have it in, like, real time? Real time. Sorry, I'm nerding out here. I'm, I'm Wait, let's dressed. go. This is, this is uh, the first time, the first contest I ever did double backflip over the first set. And this is Mad Dog, he was the, he had a crash real bad, but uh, he was the dude, man. Ah, oh, what the hell? Do you hell? see what I'm saying? It goes like, like... It looks kind of like a flat spin with a yeah, twist at the end of it almost. And then you go like, so this is the bike, and then he goes back, and because the front wheel's spinning, it makes it go over the top of you. And like, because it's, that's momentum. And I... Man. Yeah. It, man, we don't have, like, they do that now. Like, we do them, um, it was... 
holy grails I, I, we're never gonna have one right. because we keep going yeah, like, yeah. that was that was done maybe five years ago right and then from there everyone's doing tail whips and then tail whip bar spins mm. and then they're doing 720 fronties 1080 front flips like it gets to a point where now the younger has someone kids, done a 1080 front flip yes his name's I'm, I'm behind Williams. the times but is he the, sco- the guy the started on scoops yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude kills it oh. we, we get him into it we should do a <laughs> video us three yeah i'd love yeah, to he's up in, he's up in uh, is, he, is he australian yeah Oh, <laughs> Holy crap! We'll go up to his house. He's sick. It's, man, he's really funny. Did, like, what, what's your take on the the rubber mat? Like that they no, have so nitro. Like for me, for that... me, no, I have like a fucking take on nitro. That is like, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's kind of at the end of the day. Um, they're trying to do one thing that, like, for me, they're not. They're trying to progress the sport safety wise. Mm. Um, I I think. It's really cool for viewers, and I think it's more like a show. You yeah. know what I mean? But in real life, if you're gonna, if X Games should, if it ever puts a rubber mat on there, I will not write X Games because mm. I, I feel like when it's real, there is no hucking kid that can just come from the backyard that is has a resi at his house mm. and send it. Because, mm. pardon me, real stuff, you land going. 40, 50 miles an hour and like you burn through like the people that do big air they burn through clothes like to their skin like no it's chill. and I'm just like oh crap and like Jay uh, the skateboarder Jake man he aired the quarter pot like two years ago his shoes pulled, popped off yeah pulled out <laughs> the flat knees, yeah Broke that glasses. blew me away, man. Like it was like his was le- so his hard, legs man. turned into shoe cannons. Those shoes just went oh, straight man, out. Man. And, yeah, man. And how did he walk away? Yeah, like, I, yeah. even, I thought that he broke his legs really because I, I was standing like. There's the quarter, and like this bit I'm looking at is the middle, like where oh, it just man. touches. And he landed where I was standing, and I, it was how, like, how does that? Does he just no, boost so, too early or no, something? No, no, no. So when the like, I could take you, and we could do backflips, man. I could take you and do flips for sure. But when we get to the top of the lip, as you get to the top, you start almost like uh, you've pushed into like. So when you're going up the top, you're so in. Mm. By the time you get to the top, and you actually like kind of try and stand up because the G forces of that, like at right here. As soon as you get to here, you're already like pulling out. So you're already gone from where you think you're going. And that's what happened. He was going way too fast. Right. And he got to the top and he literally just pulled out. That would have been a foot like at the top of his top thing. And then by the time he made it because of the, the way that you fall. Oh, man. Yeah. But Chad Kagi, another BMF. Yeah, player, I remember Chad. Yeah, snapped his legs on that, man. And, uh, oh, man. Do, you, do you do mega ramp? No, no. Not oh, going to touch it? <laughs> so like I go to Woodward and I, and I muck around on them. But like my piece is... is there's risk to everything, right? Mm. I do so many risky things on a daily basis that like I put so much work into park and dirt and riding these small ramps that I really feel like the people that are out there doing the big stuff, they're both. So they have they they can ride vert ramps, say they can ride twenty nine or maybe twenty nine or twenty eight mm. foot ramp. And huge. When you hit it that fast, it's like oh, <laughs> and you That's get snatched. And you're like, holy crap. And then literally <laughs> I've landed an inch out, I think. And it's like seven foot down. And you're just like, okay, take it. Um, I'm not doing that anymore. But that's the whole point of like, I think watching it is amazing. I think it's really good for that. But I just think the rubber mat as in like the, the execution is very, very minimal. It's, it's almost harder to land on the rubber mat, to be honest with you. Yeah. But it gives you the confidence at the start to give whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, go. But... It's cool. It's working for him right now. You know what I mean? We'll have a talk in like, say, two months when this a, is a bit more better. About Nitro. Yeah. About, <laughs> no, about just like, a, I want to talk about BMX with you on the level of like, what, how I feel like it can be. Yeah, that'd like be awesome. Fixed. Yeah, and and yeah. this is more like us meeting each other and getting, like, yeah. getting the bones, you know, getting the structures in there so we can actually do some shit. Because <laughs> if we see if we came out of this film too with Mick. And yeah, it'd be know, sick. I'd love to. Just, yeah. Try and skate. Well, I've got some fruit grease in my car. So someone <laughs> that was filming me had them. You know? I got I got my first son turning up in a month, so I can't oh. I can't break any bones now. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. I can't wait. Yeah, mm. I'll get him on the board straight away. You got a name? No, we've got a short list of about thirty names. Yeah, so. it's nice. Hey, when you go for it. We're hoping that when we see him, we will know. No, no, you yeah. will know. Like yeah. I, I have a little man right now. He's almost four, and. Uh, same thing. I had, we had names, and as soon as he pops out, you just go, Lucas, or whatever it's yeah, going to yeah. be. Boom. Okay, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then it's, yeah. Yeah, it's I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to be in there for 
you know, at the end of the day, you're going to be able to do... Like, the thing about being a dad that I, I find, just watching it as well, because unfortunately I haven't seen my little man for a, a while now doing, like, all the court stuff and whatnot, mm. not to get into it, but things happen for a reason. I feel like it just comes down to a point of when it goes back together, you mm. know what I mean? What you do with that time that you, you get to have back together, it just sucks that I miss the small bits, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. I see other kids and I'm like, damn, man, walking and, you know, yeah. moving and talking and just, yeah. But for me, man, I'm, it's a blessing. Mm-hmm. You just like wake up and you just want to hang out, you know, and then you get to teach all this at a young age. Mm. You can become YouTube star, like <laughs> yeah. four years old, man. Like, Doo-doo-doo. Oh, he's going to be on iMovie on his iPad from an early age, I reckon. Oh, man, sure. done, dude. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's the whole point. And, I, and I've watched YouTube that much that all the people that have started say, like, uh, Tanner Fox is the fight. Do you know who that is? Uh, the the name rings a bell, yeah. And he has, yeah. like, his own app. And, like, mm. I mean, he's... 5 million subs right now. And yeah, he wow. went from like nothing two years ago. Like it's only been two years, man. And he's yeah. making like, I don't know, half a million dollars oh, on man. YouTube. There's a, there's an Australian girl called Grace. I can't remember her surname. She, she does Barbie unboxing videos. So she buys, buys yeah, yeah, the new buys Barbie, Barbie, pulls them out and does a little play act on the table. That's, that's all yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So I went to a YouTube event um, and met up with a couple of the guys that do the, the nice. back end kind of support of it. Yeah, yeah. And one of them represents her. He said she's making a hundred grand a month mm, mm. and she's pulling Barbies out of a box. <laughs> I watched, number, number three was a, a kid getting toys and he had to break them. It, like no matter how long the video was, like some of them were 45 minutes, some of them are like three minutes, but it's just a dude giving a kid like two years old a toy and he just snaps them and it's like, it has 17 million views. Yeah. And if you're making a hundred bucks per like view, you know what I mean? Or whatever they make at that, like the level of where they get to, uh, they can pretty much start their own TV show. That's my retirement plan basically, yeah. is just get him going on. Oh dude, that's it. Wait, get him to play golf too. Man, oh, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. You go play golf and you get 10th, that's, that's what I'm going for. See, I play that much now. My goal is finishing 15 years riding bikes. As soon as I finish, the day I finish, I go play golf. I come 50th. Instead of wanting to win, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay with 50th with $1.6 million. And <laughs> later, man, I'm going back to hit balls. I like the man. goals, man. You got it all sorted out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I've had so, a f- another 15 years of bikes. That's, I like I it. Think, that's I good think to hear. It's 15 good to hear. years of actually riding bikes. Yeah. Like being physically in competitions. Like, I don't want to be the oldest dude to walk away or whatever. But. Because how old is it? Ryan Nyquist is still riding. Ryan Nyquist is like. Oh, Really don't really know his age, but he. he I think he's thirty. I thought he was into his forties. Oh, he might be forty. Yeah, he might be forty-one 40, yeah. or, or something like that. But it's not that uh, I don't want to be in it. I really think that you know, fifteen years from now, I can create something within the sport that mm. keeps me here forever. Mm. But really, more as an ambassador and a more inspirational, like just I really want people to understand how good it is that BMX is been there for that long and it's just like people have forgotten how good it was just to ride down the road with their dad or something you know what I mean mm. and I look at people in the crowd man and they're so amazed but they, they're so almost like amazed because I get to go into, into the crowd or whatever but then I look back at all, everyone else and I feel like everyone else could do the same thing like come in and see the fans and try and pump them up to try and mm. really go buy some like cheaper merchandise from somewhere else and buy stuff so they can just like populate our sport back to where yeah. it was, you know what I mean? And like that's well, I like your idea about get like focusing on the scoring because in some ways that Olympic kind of style recognition is what it needs to yeah, to yeah. push maybe to push through to the next no, level. No, it doesn't, I don't know. No, it definitely yeah, doesn't, man. and people are working on it. You know what I mean? You got a bunch of different types of people trying to get it to a certain level. Mm. But man, it all comes down to this: the top dude, what he thinks, and then like if he has the right idea, it's kind of like Steve Jobs. It wouldn't be anyone else but him to make the phone the way it is. You know, mm. it could be someone else and they might have made a gas cylinder or some shit. You know, like there's only certain people I think that can affect certain things. Yeah. And when you find those people, it's like all you do is just try and hang out with them as much as you can. Like that's you. And then like you're giving me even more thought of what I could possibly do against this BMX thing that I'm trying to fight. Mm. You know what I mean? With using your knowledge as well. And, the good difference yeah, is though, you're not a dick. Apparently, Steve Jobs was a massive dick. Oh, so, yeah. well, he, he did amazing things, well, but he did it while being a dick. So. I watched the movie, okay? And I don't think he's a dick. I would actually claim that as more like he, uh, he had one thing on his mind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Was, like, there was no... There's so, I guess you've got to... the start, we yeah. the same. We didn't... For me, I was... I got told by Tim Wood, you know who that is? The first dude did 900 here in Australia. No. Like, really? Yeah, this old dude, man. He, yeah, he, wow. He, Used to go to X Games, do roll in, 
in the uh, in the boat ramp and seriously do a 900 at like 12 foot and land so good and just keep going, man. And I was just like, holy shit. But so I got to hang out with him. He built me a skate park and that whole like, I don't even know, type of like piece or whatever. What were we talking about again? Steve Jobs being yeah, a dude. Yeah, Steve Jobs. <laughs> All right. and, uh, I, I don't mean I, to insult. I, I, don't know, so I, got, <laughs> I got told that I was the most arrogant, like if I wasn't good at riding bikes, I would not be um, liked by anyone. And he sat me down and told me that. And like, kind of like a Steve Jobs thing where you're saying he's a dick. After that, I didn't talk to anyone for probably two years, right? I went and lived in the sticks, rode by myself, but I got myself mentally to a state where when I started hanging out with people, I started knowing what I missed. You know what I mean? And the things I missed yeah, was just cool, normal, normal yeah. connection. I mean, I rode a skate park every day, the best skate park in the world, by myself. And I'll get lonely, but in the end of the day, I would think of what I needed to get to, and that's how I became a dick because I mm. only focused on one thing, and like it even separated like my old relationship and stuff like that because I get so focused on what I want, and ha- and the steps almost get provided for me mm. so I can walk, yeah. walk them, you know what I mean? And then you sometimes it's like you're not on the. So right so here's a deep philosophical question for okay. you: do, do you think if you want to be a high achiever at the peak of whatever it is that you've chosen mm-hmm. to do, yep. do you think it, it comes down to sometimes making a decision that I'm going to sacrifice these certain numbers of social interactions or relationships or whatever? That that's that, Do you think that's always going to be a given to be able to achieve that? Yeah, I really think that to be any anyone I've ever seen so far mm. that is billionaire, million, like a millionaire or a couple of hundred thousand usually are focused on a main... Like they even do storyboards or whatever, but it's a main goal that they they sacrifice almost having kids. They sacrifice almost being with the the girl that they want to be with because maybe the girl does. Like this is what I've noticed that if you're just doing the same thing for the rest of your life, you can't upgrade. Like I don't even mean that you need to upgrade in real life, but it's like you can't upgrade to the life you want to have. I can't move from one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, unless I do something in that gap mm. that I've never done before, mm. and then so on and so forth. If you yeah. if you want to make a million dollars, it's not it's not hard. It's, fuck, there's that much money in the world. We can definitely do it. Then it comes down to how much you're willing to sacrifice to actually make that happen. Like think about it. Then go okay to be a professional athlete. I didn't know that I had to do all those certain things, but at the start, you just ride, 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 ride. Then you get asked to go places. Then you go away for a year. Then it starts putting pressure on something else, but you're doing something good on this side, mm. but you're, you're stuffing something up on that side. So it comes to balance then. But really at the start, it comes down to just no stopping. Yep. You don't need to sacrifice absolutely everything because sometimes you can make it work in the future. But really at the time of that start bit, I really think that the most famous people or the people that have the most fun in the whole world literally might have sacrificed their first like love to mm. to make it to where they are. And yeah, I, think that comes, I think that comes from me watching things now and and me being like lost my brother you know what i mean like the only person i've ever lost in my life at the start of people going to funerals and i've never been to a funeral and then you lose your brother and it really was the start of my whole just like transformation into not being the same as everyone else you know talking mm. shit and i'm gonna do this not doing it and just whatever i said to him it was achieved in a year easy i bought the cars mm. i'm like you know, I wanted to do certain things. I wanted to race Lambos in my car and stuff like that. So all these certain things, but then I got to a point where the goals weren't almost like big enough anymore. So you got to like, how do I get to the next level? And that's how I think now. I watch everything. I watch everyone. I'm like, okay, so you did a million things to get to that level. So I'm only out doing one thing right now. I've got to start working out how do I mm. get, how do I upgrade, I call it. You know what I mean? I say it to the missus all the time. I'm like, how am I going to elevate if say if you go home every day from work and you sit on the couch for four hours, mm. how am I going to do the same thing every day and think I'm going to get to a certain place yeah. where I can't do that? You know, and, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, but the same thing, the secret and shit like that. It's all Netflix, man, and I mean it, it comes from me wanting to know that stuff because there's got to be something different from the average Joe that is really good, say, at sport, than the average Joe that is really good at sport and then somehow gets a Nike deal worth thirty-five million dollars. So there's something that is. A little bit different. I mean, you can be really good. Doesn't mean anything anymore. And that's that's my point of, like, how I approach things and tell people. It's, 
you can be the best writer, like the best writer in the world, unless you got vlogs, unless you got a good social media presence, unless you can talk in front of a camera, unless you can make people feel like they could actually come and touch you, as in you're not Steve Jobs, you can dick, you know what I mean? But you get what I'm saying? It's yeah, kind yeah. of like more. That's how I feel like I am, and I feel like to be honest, Dave Mirror, he was like me in his day mm. and I've kind of like looked up to him forever and he was the first like pro like I went over and met and all these things and when he passed away it kind of still made me think that everything I kind of want to achieve in BMX is the right thing but you need that h- really hard uh, thing to happen in your life like me losing my brother to be able to become a pro I, I needed it I was not, not like I needed it it, it needs it now mm. more than ever that everyone sees BMX as this thing that Dave's gone how do we fix it? And everyone's trying to work together now where before we could have done that before when he was here, but mm. we didn't. It takes something so harsh to to get you to the level that you want to be at. And, and if you're willing to sacrifice it, I think you'll get that. Mm. You know, you've been through that probably as well. And it, and it, it's very small at the start, but then as money more money gets in, the more money you spend. It's like it just grows. It's the same as now, but I think... The way you think about things if something bad happens is the way that you come out of it. Mm. That's how you get better. Like, not better person, I mean like more um, understanding of certain things. If yeah. I kept going, yeah, 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 to my mum, I literally wouldn't even know that she used to cut a little bit off this roast and I never knew why and it got all the way down to the pan. Back in the day, it was so small they had to cut it off to fit it in the pan and now the pan was big enough that I was still cutting it off and I didn't get it. You know what I mean? It's like, what the- <laughs> No one really thinks for themselves. So I need to be around people that think for themselves and question everything I kind of say to them mm. because I want that rebound of, uh, is it is it what I really care for? You know mm. what I mean? And if it is, you'll feel passion. And if you don't, I'm kind of like not into it. You mm. know what I mean? And that's that's my whole life. But yeah, I, I like really it, think back, back to the start, you've got to sacrifice certain things, not everything, but to get to where yeah. you want to get to. Yeah. So. yeah, you'll never live a comfortable life trying to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah. I think the thing I got out of any book or anything that someone is really famous it's like the best thing is being uncomfortable you know yeah. the more the more you're uncomfortable and you get used to being uncomfortable the more you level up all the time because you can't this is like kind of weird for me just to do this you know mm-hmm. I, I do interviews and stuff but this is really like I want to get to a point where I have certain like you probably do it in your podcast where you have certain uh, things you want to talk about mm. this is kind of like just fluid and I want to get to that point because I've watched yours and I've watched a bunch of other people's and just meeting you now makes me feel like well, I can do this. I can just talk shit or whatever, but I really want to get something across to them. Yeah, yeah. In the sense that what I believe in is this, and and like let's work together. If they want to help out, or you know what I mean. Mm. Like at the end of the day, it's kind of like just tell them. I just want to motivate people. Really, like it comes down to it. day in day out. I don't care what you do. Mm. I just want you to love what you do, and I'll help you love what you do, and that's it. And I like it, man. People comment and stuff you know <laughs> but no I'll do the same thing for you I think that we should I should do a podcast on yours I come and see you if you yeah do yeah podcasting and hell yeah man post it up and whatnot yeah so get some followers over there yeah I'd love to it be on the time frame of like a week from now because I leave do you have like time yeah we can do it yeah we should do it next week so, alright yeah that sounds let's good because I'm about to go with Mick on a massive trip and do some I heard about that stuff yeah Nice. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah. We're going to America and we're going to Woodward. So Take over the world. Mate, it's all about I, It's all about taking over the world. Right? <laughs> I, I, I'm all about <laughs> filming. You're like, when we go over there, we're going to, uh, hopefully we film every single day, upload every single night. Because the whole bit for me for YouTube, you can start it now. It's not about, like it's almost you need a year, okay? A year mm. of just putting videos on there and whatnot and people just getting to know that you have a channel. Yeah, that's then our, our biggest like, problem is volume because I think you're right. Like, it's got to be regular. You have a team, don't you? Well, no, it's just me and a colleague, Jen Dana, it's just the two yeah, of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's the not enough. <laughs> yeah, because you, you need the volume to get the kind of subscriber base, but the problem with our stuff is we've got a there's so much research involved in getting mm. the stories together like we we did that thing on monsanto which is all about yeah, you know yeah, roundup yeah. and pesticides and we ended up getting hit up by their lawyers saying you got to take this stuff down and it was only because jen who's my partner mm. in it because she'd done such good research she was yeah, able to like actual... lay it all out to them and sent them back a letter saying here's where all our research came from and we never heard we never back heard from them again and they're like yeah, one yeah. of the biggest multinationals scare, in the yeah, world so, the so that it, it's hard to sort of be pumping out volume all the time when you got Definitely. that kind of level but yeah. Yeah. No, it comes down. I think it comes we down. We can to, help with a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Help, help you do stuff. Yeah, awesome, man. Like the whole yeah, thing yeah, is, we, yeah. we want, we like, 
I would love to have, like, I have a thing called Team Rant. It's kind of like in the back burner, but in the front burner, and there's something happening with an app soon. But really what I wanted was a place where kids could send me videos, right? I could put them on Team Rant's YouTube channel, and because I who am who I, like, who I am, mm. I guess, Monster, Red Bull, Rockstar, like the people that watch me mm. would be watching these kids. Yeah, and, then, cool. and then essentially, I hold the talent that they want to buy, oh, not buy, they want to get their own channel for in the future. Mm. And like that's the whole key, I think, like because it's all digital, you know what I mean? And like I said, Tanner Fox only did a whole year, but what he was doing was every single day, he was just filming him at the skate park, like really mm. just down to earth and people connecting. Yeah. That's the hardest piece about, I feel like I thought I was going to get 10,000 like that man I got a thousand I was like woohoo sick <laughs> how the hell is everyone at like 25 million like how does that even work but it's hard think, too though because it, I think it's all cha- like the we found yeah, the, the Facebook end stuff. of it the algorithm mm. component has just killed no, us it's, it's completely yeah. swapped because back in the day when I was talking to the Maker Studio dudes that do my channel yeah. back in the day like the cutie pie mm. he was banking money but then when, I think it was because he was kind of like it's it's got so many channels now on yeah. on there it, that don't mark my words but give it five years something else will be here like mm. YouTube yeah. but, a, but a little bit better invention than what we have and, it, and it'll take over and it'll be the same thing a live streaming or a non-live it's like well the problem is the Facebook videos just came in and cannibalized oh, the whole yeah. thing because we, we saw what happened with some other channels when they started putting videos on Facebook and it's like holy shit look at the like the, the view count yeah, they yeah, got. Yeah, so we started putting problems. stuff over there and then we find out that Facebook only counts three seconds as a view so yeah, if someone yeah. just scrolls past it in their Definitely. feed they don't even have to unmute, un- it, unmute it and yeah. that counts as a view And but then Facebook's got no way of like providing financial assistance to people making content so no, no, no. It's but tough, like yeah. He, Zuckerberg, man, he has it. He has it locked down. He had it. Not in a good way. No, no, no. It wasn't enough for us. Not no. in a good way for us. It's not. It's, that's sucky for yeah. us, but that's the same thing. But I really think it comes down to as well that it's not even about maybe the content that you put out. It's got to do with how, like, the volume. Like you were saying, mm. like, every day, you only need 10 people on there from your subs to just tell 10 other people. Like, it's just like 1% of that, one every time. And yeah, for yeah. me, it. I do it on Instagram because I have a bit of following. But Logan took off from me because he he didn't stop. So he he was doing one every day and he's been doing one every day for forever. Mm. And I was doing it all the way up to you get to about a hundred or something. And then life comes in. Mm. And then I don't know. And then I kind of question myself on what I should post because I really want to I want to motivate people. Mm. But then do you just post about me going and filming with Nick? <laughs> hey, Nick. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's what I do. And then it comes down to a point where then there's an actual way like almost your own algorithm you can come up with, where the viewers come from, because they have all that, you can see where they are, and it's like what you put up actually, maybe can do 60% of your views. So like I'll do BMX videos, almost does 90% of my viewers, right? But then I'll put up motivation, it does 30%. And yeah. then like there's probably girls that are, I've never done because I have a missus and she would kill me, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like if you put up girl side, we would take the girl side. So now yeah. it comes down to me is how the videos I want to put up, I don't want to be the same as everyone else. Same as you, you look very unique. And I want to now touch things that BMX has never talked about or never been mm. near. You know what I mean? Like if, if I can get a baseball player, you know what I mean? Same as you, it's like you, a baseball player and maybe like a, a horse rider. You know what I mean? We don't talk to <laughs> any, but it's like a whole different avenue. Yeah, yeah. You now got BMX riders that will follow you. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that now comes down to you have to put out BMX content. You know what I mean? You have to come out and film sometimes. I'm, I'm and, totally okay with that. Yeah, you have to come out. But that'll be like some, just things like that for me now. That's for anyone, really. Yeah. Like I talk to people that have heaps of subs and kids that don't have no subs. It's really comes down to just putting it out every day, certain time, same time, boom, 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 boom. And literally mm-hmm. in 10 weeks or 12 weeks, I'll give you, you'll start seeing the whole one of the one percent just telling another person it's yeah. weird enough how it works but that's what i'm saying tanner fox went from nothing to five million in two years and would be making really good like mm. money for himself and i guarantee anyone else can do it and it's just effort yeah you know, you're doing real big pieces it man. takes you're a bit of time yeah <laughs> like yeah like how long does one of those take to film? Uh, like the- it usually takes like two two three weeks to research it yeah. and then like we only, it only takes us you know a couple uh, of hours to film yeah. it but then it takes me probably four to six days to do all the animations and yeah. stuff like that. So you do all time. this stuff yourself, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like uh, everything that's done on there is you. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the, I want to be like that, right? But I can't, so I got him. 
Like, I yeah, you're the right man. And plus, he, he hooks up the dis- distribution deals on anything he touches. Like, yeah, as soon as yeah. he's... You, one, one day, you'll be out on a private jet and be like, oh, I wonder if I can become the Australian distributor for Gulfstream. Yeah, yeah, Next we'll thing, thing you'll have your own jet. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all we that's want. That's how about. Mick rolls, man. Yeah. Every time I come over here, he makes me buy something. Yeah, oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's how he is. That's the... Man, he's really, like, put things in perspective for me, too. Because yeah, now I'm cool. putting out stuff for viewers. It's mm. like, what do you want to look like? You buy a new bike. Yeah, I was about to say. Is that right? Mm-hmm. New bike. And maybe so me and Mick took over. Awesome. Total BMX full distro. Right. For Australia. Awesome. And like man. we're gonna be, like our my point is to get the best quality frame out to you and the fans for the lessest price with mm. us kind of taking the hit instead of the whole world thinking that like. There's rich people that still take the hundred bucks, you know what I mean, when they could take the fifty dollars. Mm. It's in my eyes, I'm, we're trying to get everyone on the best bikes, killer bees, and we're literally trying to give them for probably like a hundred dollars less than they've ever been before. Yeah, and cool. I mean, same quality, same everything, mm. and it's all just to get more people riding bikes. You know, I mean, great, we want to put out videos all the time, and so like we would love to just work, man. And your animations are sick. <laughs> like, got a, you know, we got like websites and stuff, so we could do like. I've always wanted to make an animation of myself, like a cartoon on the bike. That's what I was talking about. And like, it does like tail whips and shit. You know what I mean? Like, just like little things like that. Mm. We could work on that maybe. Sounds good. Yeah, that could be all right. Yeah. But man, seriously, thanks for tonight. Nah, it's been, it's been so great, man. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Cheers. We'll do something else again in two weeks, all right? I like the sound of that. Done deal. Mm.